Oreo. Nein, 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 nein. Oreo. Oreo. You're on YouTube now. Wow. Okay, this video is for my fellow math teachers or anyone who is interested to teach others about infinite geometry series. I just want to share with you guys that this is how I introduce the concept of infinite geometry series to my students. And first, let me go over perhaps the most popular infinite geometry series with you guys, which is the following, right? Let me read it around here. 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 over 8. I know, I know, it's this one, yes. 1 over 16 and plus da da da, okay? All right, first you can show that, okay, from 1 half to 1 over 4, we multiply by 1 half. Likewise, from 1 over 4 to 1 over 8, we multiply by 1 half again, and so on. So as you can see, this is geometric because each every time, we multiply by 1 half to get to the next term. And the r, the common ratio, is 1 half, so we know this converges. And we can also say that this is going to be the following. To add them up, we look at the first term, which is 1 half. We can just write it down right here. And then we divide it by 1 minus r, the common ratio, which is this 1 half. So let me put it down right here. And on the top, you have 1 half. And when you do 1 minus 1 half, you still have 1 half as well. And at the end, you have 1, right? Okay, so nothing wrong with this. This is an infinite geometry series, and we end up with a finite value 1. But the trouble is this. How convincing is this that, you see, I'm telling people that, hey, let's add a 1 half plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 16 and then keep on going forever. I'm adding up infinite amount of things. At the end, we have a finite value is equal to 1. How convincing is that? To me, this right here is not that intuitive. And if a student is seeing this for the first ever time, it's really hard to see that I'm adding a bunch of things, and we actually have a finite sum at the end, right? So this is why I do. I want to just reverse the order, and this is a much better way to do it, right? Let's talk about how can we break down one, all right? And when I do this, I usually like to attach a story next to my explanation. It's going to be making this more fun as well. So now, I would like you guys to think back Think back when you were like five years old or something. Have you ever had a piece of amazing cookie, such as maybe the like Oreo cookie, right? And when you were eating that piece of cookie when you were a kid, you know the cookie was so good, right? And were you just worry about, okay, hmm, it's so good. But if I finish eating the cookie, then the cookie will be gone. And maybe there wouldn't be another chance that I can have that piece of cookie again, right? Have you guys ever had that experience? Maybe right now too, huh? Okay, so have you guys also have done this as well? You have that piece of cookie and you know you may only have that chance to eat that piece of cookie, right? Have you guys ever done this? Maybe you want to last your pleasure for two days. So you decide to just cut the cookie into half and you eat one half today and save the other half for tomorrow. Have you guys have that experience before? Maybe, right? Okay, at least I do, right? I have. Okay, now here's the deal. First of all, let me draw that piece of cookie right here on the board. And I'm just going to make it into a square, all right? Sometimes Oreo can be a square. And this is one for the whole thing. Here is the strategy that I will teach you and I'll also show my students that. If you're willing to do the following, then you can eat this piece of cookie for the rest of your life, right? So, on the first day when you receive the cookie, don't just eat everything. Otherwise, the next day you will be sad. Or maybe the moment you finish the cookie, you'll be sad because the cookie is gone. So, cut this cookie into half, right? And for today, just eat half of it. So let's say we eat this half, right? And then we save this for tomorrow. Okay, next day comes. Well, you don't want to, you don't want to eat the whole thing again. Otherwise, when you finish that, you have no more cookies, you'll be sad. So what you can do is, you can cut this remaining part into half again. So we are talking about half of half, which is a quarter right here, right? And then the third day comes, you have this remain, right? Well, same deal. 
don't eat the whole thing. Cut this into half, eat just half of it, half of a quarter is an eighth, right? And then save the other half till the next day. And then the fourth day comes, you know, once again, you cut this into half, and you get, you know, half of that, which is 1 over 16. And let me just keep track of how much cookie we have been eating for the first 1, 2, 3, 4 days, right? For the first day, we have a well, half, so let me just write it down. And let me erase this right here first, right? We have eaten the half of the cookie the first day, and the next day we have a quarter, and next day we have 1 over 8, and the next day we have 1 over 16, right? So this is how much cookie we have eaten so far. And then on the fifth day, you have this left. What do we do? You know it. Cut this into half, and then just eat half of it, 1 over 32, and then save the other half for next day. And, you know, if you are willing to do this process, I guarantee you, you will be able to, you know, just eat this piece of cookie for the rest of your life. I don't promise how much you are eating a day, right? You are, made, you are eating, <laughs> the, the amount of the cookie you are eating is, is getting smaller and smaller, but you do have some cookie to eat every single day, all right? So, you see, this is an infinite geometry series, right? And of course, we have a geometry to back this up. And now, when you look at this expression, do you know what the answer is? Yes. And the answer to this, right here, is what? It's 1. How come? Because we started with a piece of cookie, and you know the process will just keep on going forever. And let me just first write down, hey, let's look at the 1. And we broke down the 1 into a half for the first day, a quarter for the second day, 1 over 8 for the third day, and so on, so on, so on, right? This is way more believable if you are willing to break down 1 into infinite amount of pieces. And now, when you say 1 is equal to 1 half plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 16 and so on, right? Of course, I can look at this equation backwards. I can say this is equal to 1. And that's exactly what we have been trying to show. 1 half plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8, and so on. This right here is equal to 1. But as I said earlier, it's much easier to convince others if we twist this around by saying 1 is equal to 1 half plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8, and so on, and attach a story behind it. This is more interesting and more believable, right? And hopefully you guys like this. Let me know what you guys think. And maybe if you have different um, scenario or different ideas for teaching, let me know in the comment section as well, right? And happy Thanksgiving.